pass them over back to Rimmer's drive. We didn't have any of this lot here. Didn't have chimneys. But this building here is out of proportion. It's too, it's too narrow. But that's consistent with some of the excavated evidence. But to cut a long story short, there are bits of different periods in, in this drawing that don't add, add, add together. And I, I can't quite understand what's going on there. But I, I think I probably need to do some more, more work. Um, this is a book, the painting that's in, I think it's in Army Hall, che uh, Cheshire, 1870. And if you compare with this with some of the photographs, a lot of the detail matches timber for timber. Again, there's lots of little details though. It looks like there's a door yeah. and I'm, I'm trying to contact them to see if that I'm not sure if this is um, a cropped version of a much larger painting that was used in the book I found it in or if it's if, or if that's it that's all we've got I'm trying to contact them they're going to hopefully send me an image but we've not just got paintings though we've got photographs uh, this was taken Probably take, looking at the state of the building, probably taken uh, shortly before it was demolished. And you can see, we've got chimney stack up there. Uh, there was about 15 or 20 photographs like this of the exterior and the interior. And if we go past the way back to the last image, I mentioned the door on the left hand side. Unfortunately, there's no view, from the right, there's no view looking at that bit of the building. So we've not been able to confirm that from the photographs. That's why. This was done in the 60s, and I think that's why now, I, 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 when I record buildings like this, I often use a video camera, because it means that you can go around the building and just pan around it, and the best one in the world, you can still can be bound to miss something. The video camera is much harder to miss it. That's the back of the building. <coughs> and see here, it's no straight joint <coughs> here, it's just this bit, it's tapped onto that. Um, that looks to the frame, but in some of the other views, it's pretty obvious that's just bits of wood batten nailed on nailed onto uh, plaster over there. That's the front of the building. Oh, it's overjoyed them, got these, these by the marks, they're the grapes. I've got them after we'd excavated the building. So that's where you do it, sure. Yeah, it's just, it's not just not clear enough in my mind. Like that's just a bit of shading. It's, it's, it's in shade. Um, it's, um, I'm not, it, it, if it's been blocked up before before the photograph is taken, you can see it in that. So just not not 100 happy with it. It's, you know, not credit to the mystery photograph. But it came down. So and again, that's Rimmer. In the 1850s. But that last bit wasn't, the bit on the right wasn't shown on the Arley Hall painting, was it? Sorry, which bit? The Arley Hall painting, the extreme right hand bit that you, you said a few minutes ago was tacked on, wasn't actually showing on the Arley Hall painting. Oh, that, 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 there you go. Yeah, no, it's not, yeah, it's actually right. I've not actually noticed that before. There were other bits, the timber framing definitely. Uh, Matches timber for timber. There are other inconsistencies as well. New ones crop up all the time. But above the fireplace is a crest which is supposedly crested in this the first. Um, which G died in 1601. Why anybody would put a crest on the fireplace of the building directly in 1634 was a bit of a mystery. That's the fireplace inside, I suspect. That's where that would be ripped out from. And there's something a bit odd about that fireplace as well. It's a bit too crisp. We even have plans for the building gone before it's demolished. Um, so we knew quite a lot about it. Just slight digression. Um, Newton Hall and Crow Hall were both put in the well, Newton Hall's put in the 1630s. They're quite old fashioned buildings for the time. Uh, this is a typical example of an early 17th century building in southern, southern counties of England. And it looks much more like our notion of a house. Uh, it's got 
first and ground floor windows either side of the central entrance. The ground plan as well, it's much more like a modern house. You ever wonder why your hall's called a hall? It's because the entrance takes you into the hall. From the older, old side of the building, like Newton Hall, the great hall was in the middle. And you came in through this, this door here, and that took you into the, into the, great, into the great hall. Uh, going to, in, in further back in time, that would have been an open two-storey structure. Uh, by the time Newton Hall was built, it was, a, it was two, you know, put in an extra storey. So it's quite an old-fashioned style of building. We even get, we've even got contemporary descriptions. Uh, this is from a guy called Gervais Mark, who was in 1613. And this is how uh, a typical gentleman's house in the period had been laid out. So we've got our great hall here, A. And they had a, it's like we think of it, we, we've got our own notions today of what a, a typical normal house would look like. You've got the living room at the front, dining room at the back, dining room kitchens at the back, bedrooms on the first floor. And they've got things like, well, the, so the guest chambers are here, uh, there's a lot, lot's accommodation here, and all the uh, kitchens, butteries, parlors, <coughs> all on that side of the house. It's all laid out. And there's a, there are particular reasons for that to do with stratification of society, which will probably take me another three hours to go through. So, the upshot of all that is, it sounds like we, all, we know quite a lot about Newton Hall before we, well, why the hell did we bother digging it up? What you've got to remember is I've got to justify spending a few thousand pounds to uh, someone who wants to develop this land. I've got to say to them, well, they, they can quite easily turn around to me and say, well, you've got all this photographic evidence, painting, why the heck do you need to dig it up? Why are you spending all my, my money on this? Well, the first thing we're going to that is we don't know for sure that the building was from the 1960s was on the site of the original <coughs> manor or the middle of the building. <coughs> and we mentioned in, there's mention in texts like Baines were being moated, and we've got no evidence for that. We don't know an awful lot about how people lived in the 17th century around here. Um, <coughs> there are various hints and drawings and sketches. There's something unusual about this new building. How much of what was recorded in the 1960s was actually the 17th century? And the final reason is it's, there's this term that's come into our field, you know, preservation by record, which means that if something is being destroyed, we can at least preserve it. We've got a written and drawn record of it. So we'll look at how we're going to do that. The other thing we might mention, we, we, tell, we can tell things about how people were living by the sorts of finds. These finds, you know, one of the first slides I showed of Lee Green, we've got a massive assemblage of pottery which is still being worked through, through today, uh, about six years later. Um, that, that can tell us an awful lot about local trade, pottery, potter, potters, uh, who, who, who was using what. And uh, that, the Lee Green stuff actually ties into the will uh, of 1720. So we turn up on site, first day, and that's what it looked like. It was a nightmare actually trying to work out exactly where to dig. Because I've hacked through some of that lot, and the Japanese lot we But we start off by clear pelling it, and there's a JCB. And we start, we start by uh, removing all the topsoil, the overburden that's accumulated for the past 14 years. Then there's a big clean up job once the JCB is finished. People with brushes, trowel, shovels. We are cleaning it for a reason. Um, that's not Mickey Mouse at the top, and we don't hope it's not someone's birthday, we're not blowing balloons up for them. Um, <coughs> you know, if you watch time team and things like that, you'll see people draw it, producing drawings on the site. Uh, very painstaking, with, uh, it's all bitted out with bits of string, 